my uncle was right. The trip to Iceland was very long. From Hamburg, we traveled by train to Copenhagen, the, the capital of Denmark. There we boarded a schooner to Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. The ship's crew was made up of five sailor mice, plus the captain, me, my uncle, and all our baggage. Everyone in the crew brought back steel. We had so much deer that it took up half the ship. As we set sail from the 40th port, a shiver ran down my spine. Now there was no turning back. This could be the best or the worst adventure ever. The ship sails filled with wind from the southeast and we headed into the trades of Sun, riding over the waves like a great wooden whale. I climbed onto the upper deck to admire the view behind us. I thought of Groben, who I guess was in the library studying. I wish that she too could experience this fresh air, the smell of sea salt, and the sea dolls cry. I asked, how long would we be at sea? My uncle placed a paw on my shoulder. Well, we can't be sure, but at least ten days, my dear Redlet. You must have patience. Finally, on the eleventh day, Cape Portland appeared on the horizon. It was an enormous cliff with steep walls that jutted out of the sea like a soldier standing dead. The captain explained, We need to steer clear of the point. There are thousands of rocks around it that could put holes in the hull of our ships. I realized, realized that the sharp rocks weren't the only danger. The water, was, the water there was full of sharks. I could see their sharp fins following us through the waves. Along the coast, however, I saw peaceful pots of whales that dove gracefully spring columns of water out of their blowholes. Even though it was summertime, the air was cold, the icy winds of the Arctic combined with the milder temperatures of the Gulf currents, creating an unpredictable climate. We pounded the western point of Iceland, Cape Reykjanes, and then noticed a huge dark cloud looming on the horizon. The captain squeaked. Storm coming. My uncle and I took refuge below decks, while the sailor mice lowered the sails, and the captain took the tiller. From the belly of the ship, I could feel the waves as they swelled. The ship rocked and creaked. The loud booming of the thunder made the whole ship shake. With each burst of wind, my uncle and I found ourselves tossed from side to side. He was pale as a sheet, but not from fear, from seasickness. I tried to take care of him, keeping a paw on his back and saying, Be brave, uncle. It will pass soon. You'll see. But he snapped back. I'll have you know that I faced dozens of storms over my long career as an explorer. But, holy cheese, this rocking is making my head spin. Luckily, the storm didn't last long. Soon the sea calmed down and the ship resumed its course. We returned to the deck and breathed fresh air. The sea around Iceland was wild and full of rocky cliffs. It seemed to be a guardian ready to protect the island from enemy attacks. The next day, we entered the Mouth Mouth Faxa Bay, leading to Reykjavik. It was a spectacular bay surrounded by cliffs that rose majestically above us. Swarms of seagulls flew above, creating a crown of wings on the imposing rocks. But this area was so cold and rocky, there was almost no trace of plant life. We glimpsed only a few withered trees. As we made our entrance into the part of Reykjavik, my uncle pointed to a mountain in the distance that had two sharp snowy peaks. 
he announced solemnly. There it is, that's Snaefell's volcano.